All right, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, glory, and honor. And two, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Chakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles, great millstone. Say, taste it and much love to you. I'm out there pushing out this word in truth and sincerity. And the brothers here from Tampa, Florida, and uh, he's going to do a, a open forum, Lord's Will, is edifying to the elect. Uh, so go ahead, brother. Uh, let me see if I can pull the article up on the computer. Um, all right, it says, uh, you got it? Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll pull it up in a second. Okay. All right. It says, uh, what diplomacy? Here are 36 countries the U.S. has bullied this week. Yeah. And uh, anytime you want to, uh, any brother want to speak on it as a, um, as a reading, uh, feel free. All right. It says, uh, it's been a busy few days for American diplomacy, with three dozen nations ending up at the receiving end of threats, ultimatums, and sanctions this week alone. And it's only Friday. All right, so this was, uh, like the brother said a couple days ago. It says, uh, Mexico is the latest target. Slap 5% tariffs on each and every export. Gradually increasing to 25% until it stops the flow of Latin American migrants into the U.S. All right, so as the article said, um, you know, 36 countries have been bullied by the U.S., man. All right, and that goes to uh, Isaiah 14 chapter, all right, that they hammer the whole earth. All right, if, you know, somebody want to get that. And it says, uh, with three dozen nations ending up at the receiving end, you know, with ultimatum and sanctions, Hey, either you do this or, you know, uh, they, they get threats, man. So those, those are ultimatums, right? Is that Mexico was the latest target, right? And they go on what Mexico to stop the fluctuation of uh, uh, Issachar coming in, and a lot of um, a lot of those um, so-called Issacharites are, are uh, coming from uh, what it is Venezuela, you know. If you really go into that, a lot of them are coming from uh, Venezuela, you know, because America has a uh, Undermine the economy, all right, of the Venezuelans, and now you got a fluctuation of, of, of so-called migrants coming up here to the to the Americas, man. All right. So it says, uh, thus fulfilling one of the President Donald Trump election promises. Most of those migrants aren't even from Mexico. See, that's the spirit. As I said, most of them aren't even from Mexico. On the other side of the world, India is reportedly about to be forced to face a choice. Ditch the purchase of Russian S-400 air defense systems or face sanctions under the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act. All right, Washington goes to Corporation Enforcement Instrument. All right, so even India, all right, India is, is seeking to buy the, the Russian S-400 uh, air defense systems. All right, and, and they're uh, facing sanctions as well. All right, so uh, a lot of countries are... are you know, headed towards those S-400 systems. And, and as you can see, just from the, uh, the intro right, of this article, um, you know, countries uh, are being targeted. America just being that bully, as the scriptures say. You know, uh, y'all got a precept? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to, with the hammer to her? Jim. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is, uh, yeah. You, you have something on? No, I was just quoting this scripture. Oh, okay. uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. In verse uh, 23, how is the hammer of the whole earth cut? Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes. Start. Jeremiah chapter 50, and verse 22. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. And as you can hear, all right, that sound of battle is in the land because what need, what need for uh, India to buy S-400 systems? All right, and then even the next paragraph it says Turkey is facing, all right, Turkey is facing us, you know, the similar uh, consequences because they also are seeking to buy S four hundred systems, all right, from Russia. So that that sound of battle is in the land, man. These countries, add, uh, as a, the scripture, the brother uh, let the weak say I'm strong, you know. So that's what they doing. They taking all their money, right, and put it into their military budget, okay. They they clearly see it's, it's a time for war, and that's the scripture say, um, the Lord um pretty much uh controls the, the the part of the king, yeah, all right? Oh, yeah. Proverbs twenty one. Yeah, yeah, Proverbs twenty one. Yeah. You, you can get that real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is uh, the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 21, verse 1. And it reads, Proverbs 21 and 1. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Huh, so the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The scriptures say the Lord mustered the host of the battle, man. All right? So the Lord is, is putting in the mind. So the Lord say his, he, his determination is to gather, gather the nations so he can pour upon them his full indignation, man. All right? So that's, that's, the, that's the determination of the Lord. All right? Prepare war. Make, wake up the mighty men. All right? And, 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 and really uh, get uh, the, the, like, the face of that king's heart is, to, is, is Russia, man. All right, because Russia is going to be that that it's main exactly. That Russia is going to be that main um, um, adversary to America. That's pretty much going to lead for this, that great destruction. All right, according to Ezekiel thirty-eight chapter. All right, that king's heart. All right, uh, straight on Ezekiel thirty-eight chapter. Gog and Magog. Man, the Lord has pretty much put the spirit. All right, on on, on Putin. All right, to because hey, what the S four hundred? Who that's from? That's from Russia. All right, so Russia, as scripture says, Ezekiel 38, like, we can actually hold that on deck too. All right, be thou a guard unto them. Okay, so it says, uh, Turkey, wait, is more on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead, slide. It's a Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah chapter 50, and verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? Uh -huh. How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Uh -huh. That's it. Uh, yeah. Twenty-four. All right. uh, this is twenty-four. I have laid a snare for thee, uh -huh. and thou art also taken, O uh -huh. Babylon. Yep. Because through that pride, what's that snare? That pride, because what? As you can see, all right, you see on certain maps, right? Just do a quick Google search. Uh, type in Iran, you know, surrounded by military bases. All right, and you'll see a whole bunch of U.S. flags surrounding Iran. All right, so that's that snare that the Lord is. is is laid for them, man. You, you know, through their pride, they're going to go into Iran, and then that, hey, that's going to bring forth their, their destruction, man, ultimately. All right? When they declare war on Iran, all right, hey, that, that's, hey, that's when, all, um, you know, the, those missiles going to rain on before all that. You know, the RFID chip got to, you know, come into place. But that's the that's the last target, all right, is, is Iran. So that's that snare, you know? It says, uh, Turkey is facing a similar ultimatum. Abandoned S-400, something Ankara has repeatedly refused to do, all right, or lose access to the F-35 fighter jet program. This threat was repeated on Thursday by Captain Wilbar, U.S. Acting Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. Ankara has already invested some $1.25 billion into the super expensive American fighter, but with a lot of its parts being made in Turkey, it also... Oh, that's beautiful. It says it, it's still an open question who will be the bigger loser. Mm. So that's that's beautiful, man. You know, here it is. You know, they're, they're threatening Turkey about, um, you know, about uh, buying the um, Russian S-400 missile air defense system or they're going to um, be out of the uh, F-35 fighter jets. But it says when a lot of the parts are being made in Turkey. So it goes to show you the pride in the, the America straight up being a bully, man. So it's like, as a article said it says who's gonna be the bigger loser okay just like the same thing going on in um, China all right the precious earth metals all right which is used for uh, military equipment to make military uh, weapons China said they're gonna cut the US off from those um, um, precious earth uh, mm -hmm. uh, metals man all right so this is a hey, this is pride man you know America needs all these countries but you know uh, a lot of their parts are being made in all these other countries but here it is. They are uh, trying to um, uh, call shots and give uh, countries ultimatums. And I'm like, hold on. You know, these countries sitting back. Like, hold on. The, you know, these materials or these uh, weapons, all right, partially of that is made in our country. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? You know, but that's the pride, you know, the so-called uh, white man, Esau Edom. All right. Yeah. He thinks that he can do that. Okay. Uh, you got another preacher? Um, I got one. Go I got one. Uh, you, you got one. Uh, yeah, real quick. This is uh, Habakkuk chapter two, and um, I'm gonna get straight to the point. It says uh, verse five, Habakkuk chapter two, verse five. 
Okay. Is that he's uh, yea also because he transgresses by wine. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people, man. You know, and going into what the brother's talking about and what that article was bringing out, you know, America, you know, America isn't isn't staying at in their own property, man. They ain't staying in their own country, man. They're going out to these other these other countries. All right, they're trying to tell the countries how to dictate their government. Okay, and that's 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 basically what Esau has been doing since the the time that he came into power, man. During the Greek Empire, man. You know, he started going to these other nations and and telling them how, telling them how they're going to run their company, man, or how they're going to run their their country. You know, Con. Hey, and that's hey, that, that's hey, that's perfect, man. You know, and and uh, just to just to pinpoint something that you said, you said that is the pride of these people. It said. And verse five at the, at the top it said, "Yea, also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man." You know, and Esau is, is the proudest of these damn devils. That's why he's going around acting like he's the big, bu big bully man. Okay, because he he's proud as all can be, man. He feels like he's above everybody else when really he's the basis of men. And here it is: you have the basis of men trying to rule the world, man, and, and it, it's just not going to work. And we see that happening, man, because these other nations are like, "Yo." what? Like this shit don't make no sense what this devil's doing, man. Like what what is this guy talking about? You know, because this is the basis of men. This is the this is the, the 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 most stupidest person on the planet earth trying to tell you how to run your how to run your country, man. And and, and, and it's gotten to the point to where these these other nations are now looking at each other like what what is this dude talking about, man? This dude's losing his mind. You know? And, and you know, that's the point that we're at in history right now. Huh. All right. Hey, because as a brother said, hey, these nations not afraid. They, you know, they ain't afraid of America no more. Let the weak say I'm strong. Exactly. Hey, that U.S. hegemony is, be hey, is beginning to end, man. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, next uh, country is Cuba. You know, America been uh, beefing with Cuba for a while. All right. You know, certain things from Cuba over here were illegal, like what, Cuban cigars, you know, et cetera. All right, then you had the Cuban Missile Crisis, when Russia had they, Russia had their shit down there in, in Atlanta, Cuba. All right, missiles down there. So it says, the rediscovered scapegoat of the Trump administration's newfound anti-socialist drive is being called out for supporting Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. So the Cuban president... Is, is, is helping Nicolas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, all right? And America is calling them out on it, man, all right? So it says, this, on, on this Thursday visit to Canada, U.S. President Mike Pence said Ottawa must stop Havana's Melgian influence on Cargis' affairs, despite Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's meek uh, objections that it could play a positive role in setting the cri set, settling the crisis in there. So here it is. Cuba's trying to help the situation, but they being told to stop. You want to know why they being told to stop? Because America is destroying Venezuela, man. All right, here it is. You got a country that's uh, uh, hand in hand willing to help uh, America. I mean, it's like in Venezuela, and then America tells them, hey, they need to stop uh, meddling and stop doing what they're doing. But here it is. They're trying to help them, man. Goes to show you, like, all these blackouts over there in Venezuela, that's America just hitting the power grid over there. All right? That's America. You want to know? Why, you want to know why they uh, did a, a power grid hit? Because what what the Venezuelans was doing was they was using a, a, a le yeah. electric currency, like something like Bitcoin, right? Yeah. And, and they were still bypassing the U.S. sanctions and still selling the oil through the uh, the uh, electric currency, man. All right. I think it's called cryptocurrency, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, all right. They were still using uh, uh, the internet, all right, to to still sell their oil, man. Cryptocurrency, because you know the U.S. can cut you. The U.S. can cut you off from from the uh, global market because why the U.S. dollar is uh, the the uh, the standard and is 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 what's used for our international uh, transactions, man. All right. So it says uh. It says that's thirty two countries bullied, threatened, or sanctioned in one day, counting the twenty eight EU members. I got a few seconds. All right. Go ahead. All right, Con. This is a uh, Psalm chapter ten. 
verse 6. He has said in his heart, I sh oh, wait, I'll start at 5. So I can. It's Psalm chapter 10, and verse 5. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. Mm. You know, so that's exactly what the brother's bringing out. You know, all these countries that the title of the article is, you know, that he's basically puffing at. You know, like, what you going to do, like, being a bully, you know, being a police of the earth, you know, because he, again, you know, the, the wicked is an authority, you know, but because of his pride, he continues to do these things and not consider that an end, that these nations are going to get tired of it, of being bullied and come up against America, so-called America. Uh, this is uh, verse 6. He said, he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. And that's why he makes the moves that he does, because he really thinks in his heart that he's never going to be in trouble. He never thinks he's going to have to be regarded yeah. the things he has done in the past, yeah. the, you know, is going on right, right now, and the he's going to be doing in the, in the near thought, future. Uh, I was going to say his thoughts, is that his heart, uh, his heart is that uh, his house shall continue. Yeah, he really thinks uh, this nation is going to be fair. He thinks uh, you know, the new world order is going to be fulfilled and all that. Yeah, and, and if I may say something too, it's beautiful what you said. That's why Esau, he don't think he can do anything he wants to, all right? Because he's he's the uh, the head. Yeah. So it's like, who gonna judge me? Yeah, yeah I did this, but who who gonna take me up? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I run, you know, I run the Supreme Court. Right. You know, I'm I'm ahead, but what the judges of judges is coming, man. Yeah. All right, is mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai. So that's who that's who gonna judge you. Yeah. All right, because right. Esau is above. Yeah, above. Yeah, Esau is above the judgment on this earth. He's yeah. above any judgment, man. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Why? Because yeah. the earth was given unto him. So Esau yeah. Edom is above any judgment, man. Yeah. Yeah. So why Yahweh Shai, the ultimate judge, is gonna have to come down and, and lay forth that judgment upon yeah. Esau yeah. Edom? Because yeah. nobody, technically, nobody can check Esau yeah. Edom. Okay. You know, yeah. which is why he do what he does. Yeah. You know. Okay. Got a quick precept. You had quoted it real quick. This is Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse fifteen. It says, "That which hath been." Is now and that which is to be hath already been, and the most high required that which is past. You know, so the things that Esau has done and he's doing currently right now, the most high is gonna require in that day, man. So even though because he does have the rulership, and that's why Esau gets away with everything that he does, because the earth is given unto him, you know, but that which is being done, all right, and that which has been done, the most high is gonna require when he comes back, man. You know, because they're uh, like the scriptures say, though, um, judgment isn't executed speedily. If I'm rough, uh, roughly paraphrasing, he saw things that he's getting away with this stuff, man. You know, and, and he's you know, he pushing that spirit on our people, too. But Esau, he he continues to do all these things because he sees, oh, well, shit, you know, I, 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 I put my toe in the in the in the water and it really wasn't hot, you know, I that means I can just go ahead and keep getting in more and more and more, you know? And it's going to come a time when the Most High is getting ready to turn up this heat, man, and it's going to burn Esau's ass That's right up, man. All right? Come on, I got something real quick up come on. for you, bro. This is uh, Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 4. It says, Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous, Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. So constantly, every day, wrong judgment go out, man. You know, yeah. constantly. And that's why these other nations are, are furious, man. Here it is. You, uh, uh, you go and cost these other nations and taking their, uh, you removing their uh, judge, you know, or that mayor you know, that, or of that uh, city or that country, or even setting up your own democracy, man. You know, you think these other nations, you know, just going to keep bowing down to that? No, Joel the second time said, let the weak sound them strong, man. No, so nations is, is upset because you, you constantly uh, proceed in wrong judgment, man. You constantly uh, uh, spreading forth your lies, man. Bullshit. All right. And after a while, that shit just get tired of you, man. You know? I got a quick uh, precept. Go ahead, bro. Come, come. This is uh, Psalms chapter fifty-five, verse twenty-one. It says, "The words of his mouth of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart." His words uh, were softer than oil, yet uh, were they drawn swords. And uh, those ultimatums. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? That, the, that's in the form of an ultimatum. Hey, yep. Oh, hey, either you do this, you know, that's smooth words. You do this, but or what? They draw tariffs. a sword. Huh? Yep. yep. Say it again. I said, but they put in tariffs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, that, hey, ultimatums. Hey, you do this, hey, you, hey. 
this is gonna happen to you. You know, them smooth words. Yeah, you know? Yeah. But they draw swords like yeah. pretty yeah. much yeah. hey like we, if you don't do it, yeah, I got co I, it's consequences. Yeah, it's consequences. And those are smooth words. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. beautiful precept. Yeah, come on. Come hey, on. You, and even even if um you know, even with an, on another aspect of that too, when he says, Hey, if you go along, if if, if you sign a new agreement with me. You know everything will be cool, but then you go ahead and sign that agreement, and that's just that it that makes it worse, man. That makes things worse for your people. And look at the things that is happening now to the to to the you so called Americans, man. Now your people are starting to get hit with these tariffs, man, because these damn devils they don't give a damn about your people, man. All right, all right, and and, and ultimately when you go to war, you don't care about the 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 bits and pieces of people that get killed here and there, man. Your whole main objective is, is, is to win the war. You don't care who you who has to die or who you have to kill. Your main objective is to win the war. And when these countries, when America is putting sanctions on these kind of other countries, that is a form of financial warfare. Kind of. You know? and, and, and these financial warfare tactics that, that Donald Trump is doing is also affecting you Americans, man. All right, so though it sounds good to you, like, oh, we're getting people on our side, we're getting people to agree with us, and they're signing new deals, and it's, it's, it's going to be a better deal because America's not having to pay so much. You you damn idiots don't understand that you're going to have to pay for it now, you know, along with these other countries, man. These other countries are going to pay for it because they're not getting the business as usual. Okay, but business a business is not a one-way street, man. All right, a business is a two way street, you got to give to, to receive, man. So, if another nation is suffering, another company is you're you're the person that you're selling to is suffering, that means your ass is going to suffer because they're not buying or they're not purchasing or they're not selling to you as much as they would have if, if shit wasn't going bad for them, man. You know, so that, that's another way that, that, that his words were smoother than butter, but. And his heart was war because ultimately Esau Edom is that red horse, man. All he's bringing along with him is death, man. All right, and everything that Esau touches comes to naught. All right, it's, it's been proven throughout history that all the kingdoms that Esau ruled they came to naught because of his way of ruling, man. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, another thing on the, on the uh, his mouth is smooth and words are smooth and butter. Here it is. You know, Donald Trump's talking all this shit, but ultimately, when he say, I'm going to put 25% tariffs on this country, bro, really what he's doing is he 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 uh he crashing the dollar, bro. Mm -hmm. You know? That's really what he's doing. He collapsing the dollar. Because when you put 25% tariffs on the goods, the dollar loses 25% of its buying power. Mm -hmm. You know? So what he's doing is devaluing the dollar. You know, uh, but to them, he think, oh, I'm doing this. This is a this is a power move. That's how they, people look at. Oh, this is a power move. He's going 25 percent tariff. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what he's doing is 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 calling a, a devaluation of the dollar, man, because it loses 25 percent of his buying power. Now you gotta buy. You know, you gotta uh, use more money to buy the same products. All right, which is inflation. That's he's destroying the dollar. All right, and you people don't see it. Yeah. Okay. You have some. No, I was just gonna say right. that because that's their plan. You know, they want to crash. Yeah, they want to crash a lot so blatantly. Obviously, yeah. you know, it's like a suicide mission. What this man is doing. Yeah. You know, obviously, he's just the president. He's, he's, he's the face though. of the company, yeah. uh, corporate states, America. You know, uh, he's doing that because they want to usher in this new currency, which is gonna be RFID chip. Exactly. Chip. All right. Which hey, is but real, real quick, if I may say this, you know, right now, this the 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 U.S. dollar is still stronger than a motherfucker though. Kind of. Because these other nations. If the U.S. dollar wasn't as strong as it is right now, these other nations would have been rolled on, on America. Russia would have been made its move. China would have been made its move. All these other nations would have been made their moves if the, if the U.S. dollar wasn't still as strong as it is. It, it's slowly dwindling, but the dollar is still strong, which is why the, the U.S. dollar is still the majority currency being used in, in, the, in the, the oil company, which is you know the oil industry. You know, which is the, 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 the most lucrative industry there is in the whole planet Earth, you know? Yeah. But the U.S. dollar still. Kind of. But like, and, brother, and uh, the oil company, which is, you know, the oil industry, you know, which is the, 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 the most lucrative industry there is in the whole planet Earth, you know? Yeah. But the U.S. dollar still. 
Mm-hmm. But like from right? and uh, the oil companies, you know, the oil industry, you know, this is like a, the, the, the most lucrative industry there is in the whole planet Earth, you know. Because the US dollars still but like from right? and uh, the oil companies, you know, the oil industry. Hey, you know, like, is that you, bro? Like, so like, I think I think I ah, so you uh you still on uh mute so you're just coming through uh Ariel's uh, sc- uh screen. Oh, it's the echo. Oh, yeah, like, that's that was me. Out. I had it playing loud. That was my fault. Oh, okay. Hey, Turned it off. Hey, Shalom, I can't. Yeah, Bashmi, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, but like the brother was saying, you know. The point is that the U.S. dollar is still uh, in a sewage system, so to say. It's still flowing through their system. Yep. You know what I mean? It's, so that's it's, why it's they slowly can... flowing down. Yeah, you know, but that's why they can't really make moves because it's still within. You know, it's they still connected to. It. They they still got ties in. You know. Yeah. That, yep. That turd's still floating at the top of the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until they completely flush it out the system. You know. Hey, but uh, you know, I'm gonna back you up real quick because when the U.S. dollar falls. It's not only gonna hurt the U.S., bro. It's gonna hurt everybody. Global because it's, 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 it's the standard, you know. Yeah, just, just like um, just back in, in in this financial crisis that we just had back in oh, what was it to two thousand five through two thousand like nine ten. There was a global. Well, there was a global recession because the U.S. economy went down. You know. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just a prime example, and that's not even compared to what's gonna happen here in these last days, man. When this economy really crashes, you know, when the when the when the uh, the doors are, are going to be sh- uh, going to be shut here in America, man. Okay, I got a quick pre uh real quick. What the brother just said about uh, how the other nations are going to uh, be heard as well. This is a uh, Revelation eighteen and nine. Yep. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And see, right now, these other nations, they're not lamenting. They're not mourning because they're losing their business with America, man. You know, but in that day, you know, because like we've been saying, the U.S. dollar is still strong. These people are still doing business with America. Not as maybe they might have been doing uh, business with America the last few 10, the last few decades, but they're still doing business with America. America is still a majority export company. Uh, uh, I, I say company because it really is. But country, man, you know, and so when this com- when this uh, country actually collapses, all right, when it gets completely brought down, like the brother Kanakala just said, man, it's going to affect all these nations. It's going to be a global recession, and all these companies, all Salakia, all these countries, steel companies, they're all yeah. corporations, you know, they're going to get brought down, man, and they're going to hurt. They're going to be hurt. <laughs> all right, like the like the other uh Ariella says, man, they're gonna be hurt hurt than the hoe, man. You know, okay, I gotta uh, keep going on that. I got a couple more. Okay, um, it's a uh, verse of Revelation 18 and 10, standing far off from far off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Okay. And like, what's the number one merchandise is the, the petrol dollar, mm-hmm. right? Because you got to trade, you got to, uh, 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 it's called the currency exchange. You got to exchange your your money, whatever you got, so you can use the petrol dollar. Like the brother was saying, there's still countries, even though the, the main countries are are starting to dump the dollar, but there's you still got countries out there that uh that that use they have to use the uh the petrol dollar, you know, to stay afloat. Mm-hmm. Let's go on uh, Obadiah 1 and 7, all right? They to eat thy bread, all right? You know, as laid a wound underneath thee. So you got countries that's looking to undermine America, looking to destroy America, looking to uh, deviate from the petrodollar, but they still have to use the dollar day to day. You know what I mean? The dollar is still a, a standard out there. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, we would love to see it fall, we would love to see it uh, lose all its buying power, but the Reality is, the truth is, it's still the standard, man. All right, it still it still holds uh, power. All right, within the nations because it the nations have uh, are are so heavily in uh, back to it. And the hey, that's that's that wine, right? That's that wine. 
Esau Edom deceived the whole nations into thinking that paper was worth something. That's that one. Like, you know, and the scriptures speak about the deceitful the, the weights, man. It's in the house of the wicked. That's in Micah. If somebody can find that. Bible was sharp. You know? So that's that wine. The nation have drunk in the wine and the nations are mad, man. All right? So, you know, uh, we as, as much as we like to see the dollar lose its value and just completely crash, hey, it's still a standard and it, it, it's, still, it, it's still powerful, man. All right? Which is like the brother said, which is why those countries ain't just being reckless and just doing what the hell they want to do. You know? They yeah, still have to use all these, all these different countries, like all these so-called third world countries, you know, a, a dollar goes a long way over there. You know, you send some, you, you send someone ten dollars in the Philippines, and that shit lasts them, you know, all week. You know, it, st it still holds weight in the world, although as you can see, it is crashing, and uh, it's it's on its last leg, so to speak. But as of right now, you know, today it's still the standard of the world. So we, you know, people are still going to invest in it. Still, people are still going to want it. Want to have it in their in, in their economy, so it's just it's just a, a waiting process right now, you know. Con, we got a precept. Uh, go ahead. Up. Con, this is Micah chapter six, verse ten. It says, "Are they yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? Uh huh. In the skin measure that is abominable? Uh huh. Because a dollar is 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 uh, originally a measure a measuring tool, right?" A dollar, that's a, that's a measuring system. What? It measured the amount of gold. All right? You go there and get them a certain amount of gold, and they'll give you the equivalent of dollars back to it. And yeah. then back then, the day before yeah. Nixon removed the gold currency, yeah, right. all right, uh, you'll be able to go there with a certain amount of dollars and eight, and you'll be able to exchange it for the equivalent amount of gold. All right? So those are scant measures. All right? Uh, you pretty much being uh, bamboozled. All right? Uh, you giving in real currency for, for a paper that is absolutely, absolutely worth nothing, man. That's that's unlawful. All right? That's wicked. Go ahead. Verse 11. Shall I count them pure mm -hmm. with the wicked balances? Uh-huh. And a balance, all right? Once again, that measuring system. It's a measurement. Dollars of a, 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 a measurement system. Go ahead. And with the bag of deceitful weights. And that's that bag of deceitful weights. It's deceitful. All right? Because it ain't worth nothing. It used to be worth something, but it ain't worth nothing. All right? So it's deceitful. You really think you got something like, it's like somebody talk your ass into buying something like, yo, this is worth this is worth a lot of money. And then he he boosts your head up and is thinking like, yeah, all right, well, I'm investing in this. Kind of find out you go to the pawn shop and get ready to, to sell it and get rid of it because you don't want it no more. And you're like, oh, well, this, this ain't worth nothing. But you want to, you pissed off at the dude because he talked you into telling you that, yo, this is actually worth something. So that's what they did with the U.S. dollar. They uh, 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 deceive the masses into thinking that, that that U.S. dollar, that paper, is actually worth something. And it's like quotes out there about it. Like that's, that's the power, like to actually convince the masses of people to think that the dollar all right, is worth something. All right? So it's a credit-based system. It's only worth something if, pe if people believe it, man. That's hey, I it. Got a, I got a quick you know? precept. I got a quick precept. Go ahead, Doc. This is, um, I'm going to get to the point. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nations, man? And in America, they weakened the, the nations by forcing them into doing business with the petrol dollar, man. And they had no other options, you know? Kind of. Hey, uh, especially when they dropped that bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yep. Right? Yep. Yo, we going to use this dollar. Hey, hey, this is this going to be the new... Uh, uh, system, the uh, new currency, petrodollar. Well, what you think the nation gonna do? Yeah, they gonna yeah, use yeah, it, man. Yeah. All right, out of fear. Yeah. You know, it's gonna go with the flow. You know. Yeah. It's a lot. It's, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Forget, some, forget. Some chunky shit. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Forget me. Uh, right. sloppy. Uh, this is Micah chapter six, verse uh twelve. It says, "For the rich men thereof are full of violence." Oh, and get that in James five. Bible Bashar, the rich man. How are you, rich man? All right, somebody can get that. All right, read, read it again, Bible Bashar. Come. This is uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 12. And it reads, For the rich men thereof are full of violence. Mm, and they are. The rich men are full of violence, man. All right? These elite banking families, all right, you, you, you got these people that will uh, fund both sides of the war. All right? Because that's what's happening right now. 
you got elites finding this this third world's war getting ready to kick off known as uh in the scriptures is Armageddon. All right, go ahead. Kind. It says, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies. Uh huh. And their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore, also will I make thee sick and smiting thee. Uh huh. <laughs> and making thee desolate because of thy sins. Kind. All right. Because, hey, that's that's wicked, man. When you know, when you go into the scriptures, when you go into the uh, payments, all right, it was gold and silver, real currency, man. Not no damn paper, all right? And when you, uh, uh, when somebody did some work for you, you paid them that same day, all right? It wasn't no weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly pay, man. All right, you got your money that same day for your, for your work, and you got real money, all right? Go ahead and get that in James, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, James chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl mm -hmm. for your miseries uh, that shall come upon you. Turn. Your riches are corrupted. Yep, your riches are corrupted, man. And that's what the most is doing. So, you know, all you brothers that, because uh, the scriptures say the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, all right, when he find a treasure in the field and he goes selleth everything that he has. All right, and go purchase that field, man. All right. So if you want to use a metaphor analogy, this this truth was like an investment. All right, and what you invested your time, man. All right. So a lot of these two thirds of our people made the wrong investment, but you, Akim, sitting here. All right, Lord willing, we will party late. We made the right investment, man. All right, because they invested in things that's gonna uh, fail soon. That's 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 incorruptible crowns. All right. So when you brothers put the world off and you came into this truth, okay? When you came into this truth and, and you put forth all your, your mind, your energy towards this truth, yo, that's the right investment that you made, man. So all these people that invested into this world or whatever the things they've done, invested in the stocks or, or Jake always talking about he want to get money, he want to do this, he want to do that. Yo, you made the wrong investments, man. Because yeah. all that shit is going to be brought to naught. All right? Yeah, I, got, I got a quick precept to back you up on that. This is uh, Proverbs 3 and 13. Happy is the man that findeth, findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Okay. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Con. And that's the wisdom of, it tell you that in Romans, I believe the 10th or 11th chapter, that uh, real riches is the wisdom of, of Yahweh Bashim Shai. That's the real riches, man. All right, you you know the uh, companies. When companies first start out, it's like a couple, it's like a, a few group of men, right? And then all of a sudden, it just blow up, like Facebook or whatever the shit may be. You know, it's it's it, it just blow up, like damn, them few guys they actually believe in that. And then hey, before you know it, hey, they they millionaires, they billionaires, like damn, it just started off with just yeah, me and my boys. You know, it started off at ten as ten of us. And then look, now we millionaires. And then everybody was looking at it like, man, y'all, you know, y'all, y'all wasting y'all time. That's BS. But what? They invested all they had into that little business they had, man. All right. And and that's what we did with this truth, man. All right. That's a, you know, you call those innovators. You know, they had a vision. You know, they saw uh, uh, the, the success and the end. They saw the end goal. You know, that's what yep. I mean. The Lord sees that. They, they see that. They see that. I got a quick precept. Go ahead, Arya. All right, this six uh, verse verse nineteen, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, "Lay not up, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also." All right, and 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 as your brothers are saying there, you know we don't we don't put we don't put our our uh, our uh, um, what's the word looking for, our our basically our thought and everything into what's going on down here. We already see we can look at the news and see that everything that was worth something out here is now become worthless. All right, it's becoming corrupted. Okay, and the dollar was worth you know that was the that was the best thing on going for a very long time, and now everybody's trying to drop the dollar. Okay. It's still worth something, you know, according to the world. But as you can see, it's it start it's getting corrupted. 
to, okay. to a point where, you know, there's really no point in even really investing it anymore. You're just going to, you're going to lose. All right. But the treasures in heaven, this truth, this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is what we should, it's, it's, it's the only thing that, you know, us, once you find out the truth is what you should be investing your time in. Go ahead. Um, and real quick, you know, the, uh, Ariel, you brought it up again. Kanakala said it earlier. You know, it's not it's not wise to invest into anything here in America right now. You know, and this is the this is the type this is the right investment that the men of the Lord are going to be making. All right, this is uh, Matthew chapter twenty and verse one. It says, "For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day." He sent them into his vineyards, you know. So when you invest into following this truth and to following the spirit of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, you're agreeing with the Lord for a penny a day, man. You know, this is penny stocks that we're investing into. Hi. You know, this is penny stocks. This is the lowest of the lowest. All right. But guess what? You know, through those penny stocks, just like in the movie Wolf of Wall Street, all he did was sell penny stocks and look how big he became, man. He became a, a millionaire in the movie, you know. But just like that is in this truth, we're investing into these penny stocks, these this low level, um, according to this world, this low level stuff that we're doing. Because people think, you know, the scriptures say through the foolishness, through the foolishness of preaching, you know, and that's what this this that's what our investments is to these people. They they see us investing into this truth, and they see that oh, you you guys are just like bums. You you don't really care about nothing. But really, what we care about is salvation, man. What we mm -hmm. care about is is the will of the most uh, of the heavenly Father, man, which is more valuable to us than it is to to the people of this world, man. You know, so that's what the men of the Lord are investing in. The men of the Lord are investing are investing into that penny a day, while the rest of this world is preoccupied with what's happening with the world economy, which is uh, quickly coming crashing down, man. Mm -hmm. and, and the world, the world looks at us like you said. You know, they look at us like we're a bunch of fools, like we're wasting our time. They don't see, they don't, because they don't really see the prophecies coming to pass. They they don't want to look at the prophecies coming to pass. Here it is. We'll bring it out to them, and we'll show it to them. You know, we'll send them an the article and we'll point it out and go through the scriptures with them. But they don't, they don't want to see it. They don't want to grasp for what's really happening. All right, they they look at everything like, oh, everything's fine. What are you talking about? You know, I could go to the store and buy anything I want right now. I go to the store and buy food. We ain't, ain't no famine. We talking famine. Ain't no famine out here. Oh, they, they don't want to believe that that's coming out here. Um, uh, matter of fact, I can get this real quick since I had it on this page. Uh, second Ezra 16 and uh, and uh, in 21, it says, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case, and even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So they think everything's straight out here because they can go out and 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 uh, and take part, you know, in, in the commerce of this world. Easily, you know, make money, spend money, you know, but they don't understand that because if you if you read on up back up to verse 18, it says the beginning of sorrows and great mourning, uh, <laughs> the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, the beginning of and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? All right. So it says, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish. OK. These things are coming upon the earth. This is prophecy. All right. And then it goes back and it says, behold, vitriol shall be so good cheap. And they think themselves to be in a good case. They think everything's straight out here. Mm -hmm. All right. These people who run businesses, these people who like to spend money, these people who got money. They think everything's straight. They don't see prophecy out here. Go ahead. Well, well, well just out here in Florida, you know, you got uh, you got these farmers out here in Florida who are, who are getting hurt through those uh, new U.S.-Mexico deal, man. They're mm -hmm. out here hurting, man. You know, you got these farmers out here. Their 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 business. They're losing. They're losing money. You know. So now they're now they got, they got to buy the Montana. They got to buy the Monsanto seed now. Kind of, yeah. All right. So now, yeah. So so now these people, you know, the price of of, of upkeeping these these um these produce, these farmers upkeeping this thing. Their their seeds are gonna. The price of the seeds are gonna go up. All right, they're gonna have to, like the brother said, they're gonna have to buy these Monsanto seeds. So either way, your your health is gonna deteriorate if they go that route, you know. But either way, regardless, these people are still thinking that they're in good case, man. Because <laughs> hey, whoa, shit, man, you know, food, you know, food 
it is the last thing that's getting affected. You know, prices are, are pretty good right now. You know, we can afford it's, it's about the same cost to go go out to eat and is it, as as it is to go on a grocery shop for you can have food at the house. You know, so these people are really thinking themselves. You know, just the other day I had an Edomite at my job tell me, oh, you know, you got to, uh, he came up looking for a new boat to buy. And he was like, yeah, you know, you got to, we got to uh, do something. You know, we got to get a new boat before the this economy turns bad. He said, sure. it, it, it's, as of right now, it's still good. <laughs> I say, yeah, it is still good, isn't it? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but, but. Don't, you know, don't, get, don't get used to it. Don't get too comfortable. Well, you they're know. thinking themselves to be in good case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. That's <laughs> It, it, it's easy. It's easy to get comfortable. I mean, I just you know before before this show, you know, I went out and got some food earlier. I went and got some fish or whatever, and you know, you know whatever the case is, it's easy. You just go to the store, someone cook it up. You know, they they probably caught that. You know, some boat probably was in the Gulf, caught the fish or whatever. It's easy. You know, everything is just going smooth. Everything is just smooth out here. That's why when the Lord, the Lord, the Lord said that you know this is the beginning of sorrows. You know, the beginning of Star Wars happened, it's actually starting. You go down like you was going into Venezuela and all that. <laughs> they already see the beginning of Star Wars. They're already into Jacob's trouble, okay? But when that, when that happens here in Babylon, hey, man, all these people who have been living with a silver spoon in their mouth and everybody who's been taking everything for granted, they're, they're going to be the first ones to, to, to go crazy. They're going to be the first ones to die. And, you know, Lord willing, the men of the Lord will be straight. Of course, the men of the Lord will be straight. Not Lord willing, they will be, whoever they may be. All right, but those out there in this world, bro, you know, they're, they're, their money's not going to save them. You're not going to be able to pay off the martial law troops with, with, with money, with dollars. Okay, dollars are going to be worthless. Okay, you're not going to be able to pay off anybody out here. You're not going to be able to use money to buy bread. Okay, because hyperinflation is going to finally take place and bread is going to cost, you know, damn near $80, you know, for a, a loaf of bread. You know, I'm being generous with that, but go ahead. So, uh, you know, I got a quick precept real quick. This is Romans 11, verse 33. O death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So, O death of the riches, both of wisdom and the knowledge of the Most High. So, that's the depth of riches, man. All right, and as the scriptures say, all things were written a four time for our learning. Solomon was the greatest example of that, of true riches, is the uh, knowledge of the Most High and His judgments, man. All right, and that's what we that's what we labor in, that's what we invested our time in, man. Okay, as we can see, this current world, like you know, at one point in time, you know, whoever came up with bottled water, you know, like why why the hell would you sell bottled water? You know what I mean? Like you not gonna, that's not gonna make money now. Bottled water is like a, a commodity. Like everybody knows about bottled water now. But at first, it's like why would you why would you uh, invest in bottled water? You know, it's, it's funny if I may cut you real quick. Um, because it's funny back in that that that's that's a fairly new thing. Like um, the bottled water, specifically in the plastic bottles. You know, because they used to do the they kind of started the bottled water in the early '80s in glass bottles, and then they moved over to plastic bottles, and it just took off. You know. Whatever, whoever thought of that, you know, they made a killing with it. Like you said, it just kind of took off. And now here we are today. Go ahead. Kind of, you know, so, you know, we, we made the, we made the right investments, man. All right. Which is just, it's true. Cause as we can clearly see, all right, the end of this world is, 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 is happening, man. The end of the U.S. dollar, the end of the petrol dollar. All right. We can see all things are, are coming in, onto an end, man. All right, and, and, and you know, we, we're, we're them group of people that invested in that small little stock or that small little business, and then you know, we're gonna, hey, we're gonna be, be uh, truly, you know, we, I can't even put a, 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 this is a number system on, you know, we're gonna be above trillionaires, billionaires, man. All right, that's we're gonna be uh, 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 rulers of galaxies, all right, immortal. you know, immortal. Go ahead, uh, yeah, um, um, one second, I'm gonna get something real quick. Because you just said hey. that. Okay. Hey, real quick, if I could uh bring a precept real quick. Shalom, brother. Shalom, brothers. Because uh, I don't know if these uh, shalom. I don't know if these precepts came out real quick, but the brother was going into about the the, the riches. All right. Real quick. This is Isaiah thirty three and six, and wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of that time, and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right. And uh, 
One more real quick one. Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even more precious than the offer. So this business and understanding is going to be way more valuable than anything that you can find on this here earth, man. All right, because it's going to sustain us and get us through these times that we're coming through to wind up, the uh, how do I say, uh, end up at the other end of the, the fight, man. Everybody else is going to perish with their riches, man. All right? I just wanted to add that in in case that those scriptures didn't come out. Hey, yeah, that's beautiful, bro. Because what, you know, like you said, the one you, first one you brought up on uh, wisdom, knowledge, knowledge should be the stability. All right? And, um, the fear of the Lord is the treasure. Okay? And <laughs> that's the treasure right there, you know? And, 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 um, and basically... You, by fearing the Lord, how do you show you fear the Lord? You fear the Lord by basically separating yourself from this world and doing what the Lord asks you to do. And um, I'll get this one real quick. This is uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 29. It says, And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands mm -hmm. for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit ever everlasting life. You can't put a dollar amount in everlasting life in mortality. Okay. It says a it says a hundredfold, but you know, a hundredfold compared to what we you know we have right now is still innumerable. You can't really, it, it's it's way beyond our understanding, our comprehension. The Lord is going to do deal with His servants in a manner that we can't even we can't even fathom. By that's true riches. But we're but we're the reason why brothers are doing this, making these videos, and you know going on going on the highways and byways, looking like fools. Looking like damn fools, according to this world, it's because we, we're putting we're putting money into we're putting spiritual money into our our spiritual so called four hundred one k. What you want to call it? You know, you know that's the that's the spirit. The Lord is the Lord understands everything we've done, and He's not going to forget our labor alone. Okay, anything we've done for the spirit through the spirit, the Lord's not going to forget that, and that's going right into that spiritual bank account. That's and right. if you give up everything in this world, guess what? The Lord's gonna it's gonna pay you back a hundredfold. Hundredfold, bro. Hey, Go ahead. Hey, uh, I got you. Let me back you up real quick. Bob shop. Spirit changed up. So Matthew's 19, verse 27. Then answered Peter, then answer Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Yahushai said unto them, Verily I say unto you. That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Hmm. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But... Many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Many that are first shall be last. <laughs> so the ones that are last first in this world right now, yeah, the ones that are who's first in this world right now, those those um those Ionis days, those those bagel boys, okay. You know, I don't want to say I don't want to say who they are because this place will get they'll shut us down. But the bagel boys, man, they're the first in this world. The ones that run the the the, uh, the diamond district, okay. The ones that were in Hollywood, okay. okay? Yeah, and that know, goes they, all the way back. Real quick, right. that goes all the way back to uh, when Jacob and Esau was born, because Esau came out first. He's the first, you know. First, yeah, it goes all the way back to that because he the first shall be last, and that's the prophecy too. Okay, because the elder shall serve the younger. It's all prophecy. Okay, so it, it ain't <laughs> we have nothing to really worry about because it's already, it's already had been written. Since so the first shall be last, the last will be first, and the last is Jacob. Okay, he got he got his kingdom first. Mm hmm. Hey, he, he cried for it. The Lord gave him some. He cried like a little punk for it, and the Lord gave it to him. He gave him a little sum. Okay? And 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 we're still in the we're in, we're in the tail end of that kingdom, the reign of this kingdom. All right? The, 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 the end of an age, so to speak. And when this age is over, uh, um, like it says, the second branch is eight and one. And anybody want to get it, you know, <laughs> that this this world here, this is for this this world that we're living in is for is for the majority of the world. Okay, for the majority of people out here living, this is for them. All right, but there's something much more special that's about to come, which is only for a select group of people, and that's that few that is talking about Matthew 19. That few, the elect of Israel. All right, ultimately all of Israel, but specifically the elect of Israel, which will be that ruling class. All right. Got it. Hey, what you wanted in the second Ezra's up? Eight and one. Okay. 
Eight and one, I got you. This is uh second Ezra chapter eight, verse one. And it reads, uh, lucky. Like and he answered me, saying, The most high hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. <laughs> this world is made for e for everybody. All right. This world here is and when we say world, we're talking about this current system, this age. All right. This is for the majority of the people out here. They they can enjoy it. Okay. They can they can they can hoot and holler, have a great old time out here, make money, spend money, sleep with women, <laughs> sleep with men, whatever the fuckers are into nowadays. Okay. Do whatever you want. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do out here. You can do anything you want. Do as thou will. No, there's there's no consequences. There's no repercussions. Enjoy. Have, have a field day. But the world to come, because that if you want to do that, there is a consequence and there is repercussions. Okay, and 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 that's severe judgment from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So if you can shed off the the temptations of this world, well, guess what? You know the the Lord's gonna Lord's gonna give you a world, which is gonna be basically ruling over the rest of the people who didn't want to give this world up. You get the rule over everybody else because you gave up the world. Okay, you gave up. You gave you gave up being a thief, being a, a fornicator and a, a adulterer and all that. You gave all that shit up. Okay, for what? To serve the Lord out of fear. The treasure. That's the treasure. Fear the Lord. Go ahead, I can. I got a quick precept because you were talking about how uh, all these things that these people do, you know, in this world, being homosexuals and you know investing in this, into this this. Uh, into this this world, we really, you know, investing their time and, and livelihood into this world. While you know we're being outside of that, this is um, Isaiah chapter nineteen, verse fourteen. Uh, it says, "The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit." So everything that these people are doing, all right, because of that perverse spirit that they have in it, is is failing, man. You know, and we see that, you know, we see we see the, the, the things that these people do on a lower level. You know, the, these American citizens, the things that they do is starting to fail them, man. These people are falling into uh, into sexually transmitted diseases. You know, they're in, they're going out to these uh, these clubs and they're getting shot up. You know, these go, they're going out to these uh, these carnival cruises and they're getting quarantined, you know. And on a higher level, you got these you got these elites or these presidents and governors trying to pass these, really is the president, trying to pass these sanctions, and it's failing them. You know, it's failing them because it's hurting the American people. And it's slowly bringing this, well, quickly, really quickly, it's quickly bringing down the, 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 the status of, uh, of, of America, man. You know, it's utterly bringing them uh, down, man. And it's, like I said, it's, as a drunken man staggered to his vomit, man. <laughs> the Most High is completely making a, a mockery of these people, and he's making them vomit all this stuff up that they've been doing and he's making them fall right back into that vomit, man. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's, it's all because of greed, you know, thanks to the, the, uh, to the Edomites, you know, they, they, they're the ones that have pushed out this vibration on the earth. Uh, real quick. This is first Timothy six and seven for, we brought nothing into the world. So like for, we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and rain in it. Let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So, see, that's what that's what happens. You, you take a look at this. At, at the, the people are people that, that claim they have made it in the society. And you see that they're the final end of them, you yeah. know, is, is just destruction and perdition. You know, they end up being bugged out, you know, end up penniless. You know, at the end of the day, uh, 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 demonize all kind of things because what they were. Well, here, uh, verse 10 says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know, so chasing after that bag or what do they call it, clout chasing and they, they out there clout the type of and bag. they end up getting uh, put put under foot under the, the devil himself. Because the lust, you know, you, 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 and, you know, Jake was in the world. So we all know, you know, Jake, Jake always looking for the next come up, man. He always looking to where he can uh, double his money, flip his money and whatnot. And then you end up, you know, going through a, a, a tribulation. You end up getting uh, 
going through sorrows or you and your boy end up uh, stabbing you in the back. Uh, uh, look what happened with uh, what is this dude from the Red Sox? Um, oh, yeah. Poppy. Uh, yeah, yeah. He ended up getting shot, man. And it was over money. Some nigga got contracted for eight thousand. Dollars to go kill the nigga, and look, it was it was the uh uh the uh, for the love of money. He he would have killed that man for eight dollars. Hell, mm-hmm. you know? now he got caught. That's our yeah, he got caught. Now he's got to yeah. serve the rest of his life in, in jail because of that. You know, uh, cloud chasing. Yeah. Hey, I got a precept for you, brothers. Okay, uh, this is Mark eight verse thirty four. Uh, and when he called the people, all right. Now this is a. Uh, you know, before uh, Yahweh Shah is gonna be offered up to uh, was gonna be offered up, and um, he told uh, Peter, "Get this behind me, Satan." You know, so it's a uh, Mark eight verse thirty four, and we had called the people unto him with his disciples. Also, he said unto them, "Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it." But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, all right, the same shall save it. So whosoever shall lose his life for Yahweh Shai's sake and the sake of the gospel, man. Imagine how many brothers lost their life for Yahweh Shai and for the sake of the gospel, all right? Whether it be something carnal, you know, uh, uh, to the fact where, oh, uh, this job is, it, it wants me to, it's required me to work Saturdays. I can't go out on Saturdays, you know, whether it's on a physical level. Or whether it's a hey, um, you know, you you preach this gospel, somebody heard you say it, or somebody's like you actually believe that as far as you know, stumbling blocks like uh the rape, the rape doctor they call it or whatever, or whatever the case may be, all right, and then people looking at you funny, all right. That's you losing your life, all right, uh, uh, uh for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Yahweh Shai, all right. So I'm gonna read on. It says uh it says, for my name's sake and the gospel's sake, the same shall save it. So you're going to be saved in these last times, man. All right, going back to the analogy of that investment, okay? So uh, this is the point. It says, for what, for what shall if it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? All right? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father and with the glory, it's like, and with the holy angels. All right? So you brothers uh, 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 lost your life, all right, uh, for the sake of the gospel. And, and, like, only a brother in his truth can really understand the significance of that, man. You know? When you look at these brothers around you, like, damn, man, these brothers fighting the same fight I fight. I'm fighting. All right? These brothers pushing the same gospel I'm preaching. You know, the scriptures say that you all be on one accord in the same mind. All right. It, that be no division so among you speaking the same thing. All right. The scriptures say eat the whole roll, man. Not picking and choosing what you're going to teach and what you're not going to teach. The bitter and the sweet of the scriptures, whether anybody be offended by what you say, that's you losing your life for the sake of the gospel, man. All right. Not saying, oh, I'm going to teach. I'm not going to teach this because that brings. Or too, too much uh, 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 controversy, man. All right? I remember brothers down the the, uh, the GMS, uh, I believe it's Jamaica camp, right? Somehow, I remember a couple, few years back, Nate took his ass down there to Jamaica or something. And the brothers was there, you know what I mean? And, and they was pretty much, they confronted Nate and they was cutting his ass up, so to say. And you know what Nate did? Nate knew it. Yeah, his wicked ass, exactly. His wicked ass came and said, hold on, hold on. Let me ask him a question in front of the whole congregation. He said, is it okay to rape women? All right? Is it okay to rape women? So the brothers was put on the spot in front of all the people. because There was a big ass crowd around, right? And they was cutting Nate ass up to the point where that's what he had the result to. All right? Is it okay to rape? And them brothers had to bite that bullet, so to say. The brothers have to eat that up, like, and they and they 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 didn't say no, nah, no, nah, no. They said yes, according to the scriptures, yes. You know how them people looked at them, like, damn, like they say they just said it's okay to rape women. But what? That's eating a whole roll and not being ashamed of the gospel, which is the word, which is Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Shai said he ain't gonna be ashamed of you. 
for all the people to stir from the bitterness of the scriptures. All right, don't want to be on the forefront. All right, out there on the highways and byways, putting your face out there, putting your lives on the line, like the brother uh, Malcolm was saying in Chicago, putting your life on the line and, and, and risking your freedom to do so. All right, it's going to be a great reward for you, brothers, man. If ye continue in the faith, all right, it's going to be a great reward for you, man. Your house size is looking for man. The scripture saying, David said, um, well, so I won't say David, but you know, he's speaking through the spirit. It tell you in Psalms, the scripture say, who shall rise up for me? All right, against the workers of iniquity, against the evildoers, man. All right? So that's a heavy, heavy thing, Yahweh Shai said, man. Don't be ashamed of him in this adulterous and sinful generation, man. All right? And going and speaking on the celebrities, like, yo, they gave up, they, they, they lost everything, man. They gave up their soul for carnal riches, man, but yet for a moment. All right? The scriptures tell you in, uh, by faith, Moses, all right, he was, uh, 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 uh had a high office in, in, in Egypt. He forsook that uh, 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 that that sin for a season to uh, to uh, endure afflictions with the people of the Most High, man. All right. So you you, you know it's it's really you know it you know the Lord has given us that vision that has opened up our eyes, man, and we see. All right, we see the kingdom. I remember uh, a brother, I believe, it, oh, the Gabor just made a video earlier today, man. Like you you gotta actually envision, you gotta visualize your house shot coming, man. Every brother should, you know, have that image in their head. They can see how shot coming back, and you call him, yo, 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 you, you, you crying because he he showed up in that big ass ship, man. And you you see it, you like you you supposed to be able to vision that in your mind that that's him. He gonna be coming, man. All right. And then the scriptures also say they will some that call upon his name, and he told them, depart from me. I know ye not, man. All right, ye workers of iniquity. Why? Because they was ashamed of the gospel. All right. They was not on the highways and byways feeding the flock. They wasn't putting forth that love, man, towards Yahweh Shai and towards his name and for the sake of the gospel, man. All right? Because Yahweh Shai knew in these times that, you know, uh, 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 brothers are going to be persecuted for the things that, that we're saying. Right now we're being persecuted. Talking about, oh, it's hate speech, a supremacy, so on and so forth, man. It's going to come a time where we're going to be starting getting arrested for the things that we speak, man. But Yahweh Shai say, if you lose your life, for my name's sake and the sake of the gospel, your life shall be saved, man. All right? That's all, uh, it's all man. So, yeah, first, 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 oh, go ahead, brother. I was going to say, I got a quick precept. This is Revelation 2 and 9. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and they're not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Just touching on what you brothers are going into, you know. The, Yahweh, this is Yahweh Shah speaking, saying, I know thy works and thy tribulations. So the things that we have to go through to be able to, you know, do this here work, you know, the, hey, the Lord know our, our troubles. The Lord know our tribulation. The Lord know all the things that we're going through, you know, and he knows our so-called, you know, uh, monetarily our, our poverty, but also the poverty of our spirit. You know, we're at the bottom of the bottom here. But what the Lord said, but thou art rich. You know, we, 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 we stand in line to inherit to be the first fruits to inherit the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. So. The Lord is saying, look, I know it's tough right now. I know, I know it's hard right now. But look, once you get through the storm, man, it's going to be sunshines and glory on the other side, man. So all you got to do is make it through this, this small little piece. All right. So I'm going to read it one more time. It says, uh, Revelation 2 and 9, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but the synagogue of Satan. And just touching on one more point there, you know. You know, uh, the Amalekites, the so-called Jews, they're the ones that's, that's pretty much the, the, you know, the head tribe of Esau or Edom, you know, and they're the ones that's in rulership, you know, and they're the ones that's setting the so-called standard on this here earth, you know, telling everybody what's right and what's wrong. So the way they have things set up makes everybody look at us like we wrong, you know, like when they talk about homosexuals, that's OK for them to get married. We should include them in everything. When we say, look, according to the scriptures, that's going off. All right. But then that makes everybody look at us like we wrong. Right to go to the blasphemy of them, which they say they're Jews or not. Not only that, they're the ones saying that they're the Israelites, but you know, and telling us we can't talk about them and anti Semitism and things like that, the hate speech that the brothers are going into. But ultimately, this is a, a glorious work to be doing for the Lord. All right, we're not doing this in vain, man. The Lord is going to repay us back for all of our works, man. All right, well, He's going to repay everybody back for all their works, some for good and some for bad, man. All right, John. that's all I had to say. Hey, I got a quick, hey, no, Ariel, you had some, right. Oh, no, go ahead. You got it. All right. Uh, quick precept. Uh, back up the brother real quick. Speaking on what the brother said. 
um, you know, as you have shot spoke, man, you know, just hold strong, man. All right, you know, the, the, the stormy weather, you know, it can't it can't always rain, man. You know, you know, uh just looking outside when you see dark clouds gathering and start pouring down raining, you know, damn well, eventually it's gonna stop. You know, you you have that in your mind, yeah, it's gonna stop, it's gonna clear up soon because you know it you can't rain forever. All right, so same thing, like you know, compare that and it's true. It can't rain forever, man. All right, so you know, as as the brother said, you know, just hold on, and then what the you know the glory and, and the rest and everything is gonna come, man. So I'm, I got a quick precept, real quick. This is uh, Saint John seventeen, verse twenty four. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. All right, O righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee, but these have known thee that thou hast sent me. All right, so yeah, I was shy, man. Pursuing the Revelation, the fifth chapter, all right, and we walk, we walk in that, that same path that Yahweh was shy. The scriptures say to live is Yahweh was shy, which means to suffer, but to die is gain, okay? So we walking out to that same path that Yahweh was shy took. We bearing our cross. As a brother, you know, back on the brother, you know, making a point. He said, you know, just just hang tight, you know, and, and the rest and the and the glory is gonna come. All right, we suffering, you know, at not to the magnitude of Yahweh Shai, but we suffering as Yahweh Shai did. All right, and what he said, I wish they was with me so they can behold my glory. What did Yahweh Shai go through? All the stuff he went through, and then what he was glorified, man. Well, he told that male factor, this day shall I be with me in paradise, man. All right. So what? That's what's gonna come. You how I lay like yo? I wish I wish them brothers up there, thou, them that thou hast given me. I wish they was with me so they can behold my glory, so they can see what I have received, man. All right. Yeah, how shy is up in the heavens, man. He received. He received the, the uh, uh that that he received that kingdom in the spirit. But the scriptures say that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that kingdom, all right, that glory that Yahweh Shai has received up there in the spirit, because all things first begin in the spirit, then they phys physically manifest themselves down here, all right? So that kingdom and that glory that Yahweh Shai is getting up there to all the angels and all, all the servants of the Most High praising him up there, all right? That's going to come down here on earth, man, okay? See how Shai said that. He said, I wish that they were with me so they can behold my glory, so they can see, man. They can see what I got, man. All right? This is what you're going to get if you endure, man. All right? And, and, and if you, and, uh, the scriptures say, uh, uh, many, uh, all they that will live godly, all right, and Yahweh Shai, shall suffer persecution, man. All right? And that's a constant thing we always putting out there. The scriptures say, therefore, comfort one another with these words, man. All right? We always comfort, brothers always making uh, videos about enduring afflictions, man. Okay? Catching hell, always exhorting one another daily, man, about enduring all these things that we go through, man. You know, it's like we, you know, it's like you, you, you can't think you preaching to the cho the choir, but hey, everybody always catching hell to the point as Second Peter say, and then you begin to become settled, man. All right, settled in this thing to the point that hell you catching it ain't it ain't shit, man. It ain't even be to be spoken of. Yeah. It ain't it ain't held to you no more. Yeah. All right. You become yeah. numb to it because yeah. why? You begin to be rooted, man. That seed was sown in good ground, man. Yeah. We heard about That's the right. seeds. Yeah, we heard about the seeds so uh, uh, uh sown on stony ground, and you know, and then when the sign came up and, and that in that fourth compared to the afflictions, and it scorched up, man. All right. Are you are you a leaf? You a branch or a root? Which one are you? A leaf is just carried away by the wind, every waver doctrine. All right, here it is. You get or you get offended by some some of the doctrine or whatever the case may be. Or a branch, it hangs on strong for a minute, and then what? A strong enough wind can just take that take that branch out. Or are you a root, man? Deep within a great soil, man. All right. Because if you notice, the roots are the things that receive the moisture and then therefore uh, uh, transfer it to the other parts of the tree. All right. The roots is the things that absorb the, the moisture. That's where the moisture is absorbed, which is the water, which is why the, 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 uh, 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 the scriptures compare it to the water. All right. Which is the light. The roots are the things that absorb the water and give it to the, the, the life to the rest of the, um, the tree. All right. 
Hey, hey, real quick, because wisdom, you know, you could you could liken you could liken you could liken the soil that we're rooted in as as wisdom. The wisdom is is likened unto a woman, anyways. All right, and uh, and 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 you know, Jake like to call their woman like their earth. Okay, so what you plant, you plant your seed in your woman. So it's the same thing with this on a, on a spiritual level. We've been spiritually planted, rooted, and 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 the truth or wisdom. Okay, which is likened unto a woman. So that's something that you you, you don't want to let go of. But if you if you plant it onto anything else in this world, hey, hey, like the brother just said, you if you leave, you're gonna get blown with the wind. If you're a branch, you're gonna get snapped. <laughs> but if you're a root, you're always gonna continue to grow. Go ahead. Connor, I got a quick precept. This is um this is Colossians chapter three, verse uh, twenty-three. It reads, and, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord, so like knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Hamashiach. You know, so that's ultimately why we're doing this truth, you know, to, to get that reward, like the brother was going into, that because we're joint heirs with the Lord, uh -huh. so we're going to receive the, the inheritance with him, all right? That's the same reward, okay? And that's why we got to endure, you know, uh, uh, strive to that. Strive uh, for the truth until death. If it, that's, if it the least we could do. That's, that's the least we could do, you know, because it says in Romans, Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Oh, that's your reasonable that's service. Yeah, that's the least. Precept, Go ahead. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Perfect precept, bro. Reasonable yeah. service. God, you're beautiful. You know? That's all I want to say, bro. Go ahead, man. Like it. Water. Yeah, no, sure. You know, because that's what that's the least we can do out here. That's, you know, here it is. We out here, we got all this liberty to do anything we want. But here, here it is. You got to remember what the Lord did for you. The Lord actually laid his life down for us. He laid his life down for the whole nation. We should have been destroyed already. But but here, here it is. The Lord had mercy on us by sending his son, his, his, his only begotten son, as that as that sacrificial lamb. Yeah, that sucks, bro, to have to have done that. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to have, but man, to get to have to go through what that man went through, you know, you gotta you gotta always put yourself in his shoes. That is a tough lot that Yahweh have to had to go through, but he did it. And now, because of that sacrifice, guess what? We still here, and now we have to give up our our bodies the same way, all right, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, all right, unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so we should do, brother. Go ahead. This is uh, St. Matthew chapter 19, verse, uh, I'm going to start verse 27. It says, we wrote that already. We read it. And said unto him, speaking of Yahweh Shai, behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Verse 28. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, verily I say unto you, that ye would have followed me in the regeneration, proven, uh, uh, proven uh, reincarnation, man. All right. Mm -hmm. He said regeneration to his disciples, man. What did he mean? Okay. St. Matthew's 24th chapter. It says, when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, okay, of his glory, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 thrones, so judging the 12 tribes of Israel, and everyone that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be the first. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. You see that? So we understand that by, by sacrificing, you know, the things of this world, we get to gain an, an eternal life. Okay? Because the Lord did it, and the Lord is asking us to do it. All right? And if we do it in truth and sincerity, then guess what? The Lord is going gonna, is gonna to bless us an hundredfold. All right? You do the math. And I'll get this uh, in Romans uh, 12 and 2 now. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove 
that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. So we're not to be conformed to the world that's, that we live in right now because this world is for many. All right. We're not of many. We're of the few. OK, we want the world that's to come. Uh, the world that's to come is, is made for a few and only and and the the Lord has has his elect, which is going to rule the world to come. And Lord willing, brothers are a part of that. OK, because this world is being ruled over in wickedness. The next world, the next age is going to be ruled over in righteousness. But in order to get to that level, you have to do the will of the, what's acceptable unto the most high, which is your reasonable service. The perfect will, acceptable and perfect will of the most high. You have to do that now whilst, whilst in the flesh. OK, it's hard. I know it's hard, brothers, but you got to you got to you got to wake up and you got to shed this world off man. you got to be strong. You got to stop being a punk. And you got to shed this world off. Stop being so so weak. OK, and, and uh, know, know what's right, know what's wrong. Uh, otherwise, you know, when the, when the shit hits the fan, you, you're going to have to bite that bullet, a physical bullet. You are gonna have to die. All right, brothers. Uh, Hi, uh, real quick. Um, what was um, if y'all brothers know the the preset where uh, where Paul talks about glory not for doing this work? Uh, brothers, know what that scripture is? Um, I no, I I, I, need, up. I, need, I, need, I need more words to that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Con, what you said, real quick. Con, where Paul says, "I I glory not of the work that is um that is required of me." Basically, roughly paraphrasing. Oh, uh, where I'm a profitable servant. So lucky. I don't know. I think I think so. That would I think I think that's my reasonable service. Oh, Con, right oh, oh, my necessities is laid upon me. Yeah, um, yeah, I got it right oh, here. Oh, to me, if I speak not, the gospel. Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, that's it. I got it. This is right. First Corinthians nine. Hey, what glory do I have? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, it, brother. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down, brother, calm down. <laughs> this is our first Corinthians 9 and 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me on so look, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You know, so like the brothers are saying, man, you know, like brothers are saying, this is this is this is not something that we should be, you know, that we should glory about, you know, being able to do, you know. This is this is uh our, our necessity. This is the whole duty of man, you know, going back to Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is what we're required of, you know, like the brother uh brought out this is my reasonable service, man. You know, this is the <laughs> this is the least thing that we could do it, man, is, is go out here and, 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 and preach this gospel, man. Preach the good news on out onto the onto this world, man. Mm -hmm. You know? It seems like this is the most we could do, but no, this is the least we could do, brothers. Yep. Yes. At least you got to be doing this. Well, if you're not at least doing this, then you're not doing jack. Con, well, we can say this is that if you if you have that mentality that this is too much for you to do, then then you just weren't meant for this, man. Because the real men of the Lord, this like the brother just said, this is gonna be the least thing that we could do. Because you're gonna hunt, you're gonna be like, man, I can't. Like Paul even said, I wish that myself was a curse, man. That's right. That's would, right. And that that's the same spirit that the elect is gonna have, man. We wish that we could have been up there. Instead of Yahweh Shai, man, but you know we know that it was all according to the plan of the Most High. But still, that's that's the tank, type of mentality. Like, man, this is the least thing that we could do is is go out here and, and and preach this word onto the four corners of the earth, man. You know, this is the least thing we could do. You know, we don't got to be all flamboyant going to Walmart <laughs> and, <laughs> and being on top of tanks and being on bridges where the cops get calling you because you they people thought you was gonna commit suicide. You know, that's that's just being. You you going above and beyond, man. You should, hey, we, we we just sticking to the point, man. We sticking to the penny, the penny that the Lord has given us, and and that's what we rolling with, man. And we doing the most with that penny, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's uh, that's pretty much it, man. You know, uh, any brothers got anything else? Nice. Huh? Yeah, you can go. You ahead. got it. Close it up. All right, all right. Uh, with that, you know, we're going to give all praise, glory, and honor to your house. Oh, no, I'm going to talk to God. Double ones to the apostle, the great millstone that taught us his truth, and blessing all you sincere labors out there pushing his truth, and all sincerity and faith and honesty. All right, shalom, and walk love of all. Shalom. Shalom.